Hello friends, my goal and mission is to take your playing to the next level. This is a class for intermediate to advanced students and I hope I will give you some new inspiration and ideas. Let's start working. In this movement we have big leaps followed by linear small steps and I like to apply the Baroque rule which is the bigger the interval the more air in between the notes and vice versa. When the intervals are close play more legato. <laughs> of fingerings let's try to play the B flat in bar one on the A string so that the two voices are uh, more separated <laughs> rather than <laughs> this is definitely easier and more comfortable but if we use um, the A string for both the A and the B flat it is definitely easier to hear the difference in color between the A string and the, and the lower strings. I like taking another down here so that I finish a bow and this will catapult me up to the air and then down to the D in bar four. This sleep is also more dramatic if you use the first position for the B flat. So the first part consists of four eight bar phrases. The first eight bars are antecedent consequent or in simpler words a question and answer. Um, four bars answered by another four bars. So we have this is the second half. And starting bar nine, try to see if you can change the character to have a darker mood. Um, here we have two bars. Another two bars. And here four bar answer or resolution. Um, in other words, be sure that you're not accenting the downbeat of bar 15. Similarly, the next eight bars are billed as two bars, another two bars, and which are sequences and ending with four bars. So starting a bit to bar 18, the mood is again jolly in my opinion, and try even roughing it up a little bit. So. <laughs> Bars 25 till the end of the first half are again an antecedent consequent or a question and answer. Four bars answered by four bars. Notice that in bar 25 we start a longish ascent in one voice and a repeated pattern in the other voice. So. <laughs> As always, I like separating those voices when I practice. And, and, and then putting them together. And also to mark the start of this little mini journey in bar 25, I like taking a little time on that C. So, experiment with taking a little time before the upbeat in bar 36. Let me play uh, from the second half. The following four bar subphrase has a different character than the one we just played. Um, also interesting to point out are uh, Anna Magdalena's slurs. This is not clear, but this is my interpretation of this bar. So this is definitely a little um, off the beaten path, and I think very 
beautiful. Here we have again two voices. And um, notice that the downbeat acts both as the end of one voice and the beginning of the next voice. A note might end a phrase and also start a new phrase. So I like to think of the lower voice as the one in red. And the top. And then put them together. Downbeat of bar 45 is a Neapolitan chord and it has this A flat. If Bach didn't write the A flat, it will sound like this. And now if we go back to what's written, sometimes it's good to refresh our uh, ears and we're so used to hearing that A flat, but it is a very poignant and has a special color that wouldn't have been there. Uh, if it wasn't for that uh, accidental, uh, the note that is out of key. Another idea is to sit a little bit on the F sharp downbeat of bar 43. And, and, and this will create a two and two uh, bar units. So one unit and another unit. One is going down, the other one is uh, going up. Bars 49 to 56, uh, we have a cycle of fifth. Um. And here, change of character again. Bars 69 to 71. Tension builds through the use of the Neapolitan chords again. And Just for comparison's sake, let's hear it without the B flat. With the B flat. The downbeat of measure 68 could have been the end of the movement, so it could have ended. Uh, but Bach wrote a little coda, mini coda. So. so as long as you're aware and uh, of the structure. talk about slurs. I like playing the downbeat of 72 on the up bow because I feel like I can sustain that C sharp. That is the dissonant. And then you can also finish the movement with a bravura up bow slur. So leads me to the next point that you can actually uh, play this movement with opposite slurs to what most of us play we usually play looking at the second half but you can actually start with the down bow so and this will make that upbeat jump out much more clearly from the page so then bar 34, you don't have to retake your bow. Uh, just an idea to experiment with. You can also apply this to the very beginning of this movement. So if we are to start down bow, down, up, down, up, and then finally uh, in the fourth bar, we finally land on the down bow. So this can also be very interesting. But uh, I will let you explore. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.